Former first inductee into the NTPA Hall of Fame, became a popular figure in the sport as his unabashed personality and drive for success by means of being different gained him fans across the country. Similar to his successful business ventures in his hometown of Middlebury, Vermont, Gardner Stone has found success on pulling tracks across the nation. Gardner Stone had an interesting start to his pulling career. Stone was familiar with competing as he drag raced locally in Vermont. After watching a local pulling event in Rutland, Vermont, Stone was impressed with what he saw. He also attended an NTPA indoor event in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and witnessed for the first time the modified tractor and decided to get into the sport in time for the 1978 season. He decided to start small, literally, as he had ProTrack Engineering built a mini rod frame equipped with a 427 carbureted Chevy with aluminum heads producing 500 horsepower. Gardner chose the name Widowmaker for the Mini and was eager to see what it would do. Incredibly, Stone had never seen the Mini Division compete, so the first Mini class he entered in Walton, New York was also his first time seeing the class. Wouldn't you know? Stone drew first hook of the class, watching the class for the very first time from the driver's seat. One full pull later, which led to a pair of wins for the event, one could say that Stone was hooked. Like most pullers, Stone paid his dues at the state level in Vermont, becoming an officer in the association as well as being part of the group that purchased a pair of sleds to help promote the sport, even organizing exhibition pulls at various locales for the benefit of the expanding and new Vermont tractor pullers. In time for the 1979 season, Gardner Stone added a second vehicle with a power plant that made Stone famous during the 80s decade on the NTPA national level. A single Allison-powered modified called the Brigadier was added alongside the Mini. Stone was under the impression through observation and conversation that the Allison aircraft engine was the most reliable engine for dependability and horsepower. However, a huge learning curve was needed as 11 Allison engines were destroyed in that inaugural season. In the off season, three engines were sent to the Mike Holden shop and two engines came back. Gardner was able to keep those engines living for four seasons. Although the Brigadier had modest success on the BTPA state circuit during Stone's early days, its carbureted Allison was lagging behind what most competitors were running in the heavier weight modified classes. So in 1983, Stone debuted the first generation of the General moniker with a single turbocharged Allison that could make weight class in the 5,000 pound modified class. The Widowmaker Mini was replaced by the General and Stone's first success at NTPA Regional National was in the history books, a championship in Region 1's 7,000 pound class. In 1984, the General found additional success in the 5,000-pound modifieds with a second year-in-a-row championship in Region 1. Still, Gardner had his eye on the NTPA Grand National schedule for 1985 and was looking for more power to keep up with the supercharged V8 competitors such as Hall of Famers Dave and Ralph Manor, Tim Engler, and Butch Hutcherson. Although the V12 Allison was still a top five viable option for power in the modified class at state and regional level, it had taken a back seat at NTPA Grand National levels as 1985 arrived. However, Stone, ever mindful of being different from the crowd, decided to raise the ante in regards of how Allison power was being utilized. He built a new twin engine Allison entry named Mr. LTL, loud, tough, and lethal complete with turbochargers, debuting it in the spring of 1985. The entry retired the dependable Brigadier, and Stone found himself in victory lane three times as the winner of the 7,200-pound modified class NTPA Grand National level, winning his first ever Grand National class in Richmond, Virginia, as well as taking home wins in Toma, Wisconsin and Bowling Green, Ohio. Another Region 1 title was netted as well. In 1986, Stone decided that Mr. LTL displayed the power needed to have a chance against the four supercharged engines of the day. But to have a chance at the heavier modified weight categories, he'd have to find a way to carry three engines in those classes. Once 
once again, Stone had a triple turbocharged Allison powered entry built to win against the five and six engine powered machines. Gardner, along with his son Todd, decided it was time to chase the NTPA Grand National Circuit full time with the new and improved General. It hadn't been since the late 70s in which an Allison aircraft powered vehicle would be a consistent threat to win a heavier weight modified category. But with Stone's new creation, he was a top five finisher all year long in the 9,000 pound modified as well as the unlimited classes. In July of 1986, Stone won the 9,000 pound modified Port Recovery, Ohio. Just like the year before, Stone won with Allison aircraft engine power in an NTPA Grand National weight class that hadn't been done in quite a while. In 1986, Stone garnered a fifth place point spot in all three heavier modified categories in the Grand National level, and in 87, he savored his best points finish ever with a runner-up in the 9,000-pound modified and a third place in the Unlimited. In 10 years, Gardner had gone from pulling locally in Vermont with an aspirated mini ride to being a stalwart on the NTPA Grand National Trail. In the winter of 1988, Stone traveled overseas to make exhibition passes at the European Championships in Holland with the General, as well as hooking in France. However, Gardner was feeling he'd gone about as far as he could with the Allison engine as he was pushing them to their limits and decided the new power plant was in order. He spoke with pulling legend Art Arfa about what turbine engine would work best and then worked with Marv Cotman to purchase four General Electric T-55 Lycoming turbine engines. In 1988, the General Stage 4 was created. It took a full season of figuring out the very powerful jet turbine configuration. In true Gardner Stone spirit, it was unique in every way. After all, it was the first time that anyone had utilized four turbine engines in one application, including the military, which used a pair in the Chinook helicopters. And Stone was admittedly a novice when it came to the turbine, as he was 10 years earlier with the Allison power plant, but he figured it out. By 1989, Stone was beginning to find reliability and wins with the General Stage 4. By the end of the 1990 season, Gardner Stone earned a pair of NTPA Grand National titles in both weight categories offered that season. His first and second title came in that one magical season. In 1991, Stone ended up runner-up to the Banner Brothers in the points race. Business concerns at home left Stone in hiatus for five years, but Little did Stone or the pulling world know that the best was yet to come. After a pair of runner-up point finishes to Rodlin Knox in 97 and 98, Stone broke through for his third championship in 1999, 15 points ahead of Bill Voorhees in the unlimited class. Stone won back-to-back -back titles in 2003 and 2004 and last found in the year-end points title in 2006, finishing in seventh place. Gardner decided to retire and still owns the general stage four just in case the pulling itch ever needs scratched again. Besides Gardner Stone's on-track success, he was a leader in the business side of the sport. He financially invested in the sport as a shareholder of World Pulling International twice, initially during the first stock offering in 1985 and then again several months later when it was realized that the debt amassed by NTPA was worse than first believed. Stone lended his business savvy during the early years of WPI, serving a three-year term as WPI Vice President. The early years were the toughest times for the new corporations. Stone's strong personality and backing of the decisions made were critical to the restructuring of the company. Stone continues to be a shareholder, and many of Stone's influences from his time served on the WPI executive board are being felt today. All told, Gardner Stone earned five NTPA Grand National titles, numerous wins, and all of the major pulling events of his generation, and supported the organization during its tougher days. Many times, Stone was heard to say, In the unlimited class, it's run what you brung, hope you brung enough, and the whiners stay home. And over NTPA's storied history, more times than not, Stone brung enough, enough to place him among the sport's best of the best. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mr. Gardner Stone, member of the 2009-2010
2014 NTPA Hall of Fame class.